Hi everyone, welcome again to, to another uh, lecture on uh, property and land registration laws. Okay, so our topic for today is land laws. So we will discuss uh, PD number 1529 or the property registration decree and Republic Act 26, uh, the proceedings for a constitution titles. So we will first begin with PD 1529. Section 2 of the said law provides for the nature of registration proceedings. Um, registration proceedings under PD 1529 shall be in REM. So it is against the property itself and it seeks to bind the entire world with respect to that certain property, which is the subject of the registration proceedings. Now, who has jurisdiction over registration proceedings? So regardless of amount, as long as it is a land registration proceeding, the court which has exclusive jurisdiction are the RTCs. Okay, they shall have exclusive jurisdiction over all applications for original registration of title to lands, including improvements and interest, and the overall petitions filed after original registration of title, with power to hear and determine all questions arising upon such applications or petitions. Okay, original registration proceedings. Who may apply? Okay, so the following persons may file in the proper RTC an application for registration of title to land. So we are speaking here of judicial confirmation of title or original registration of lands. So the per, the following persons may apply for original registration of an unregistered land. Okay. Those who by themselves or, or through their predecessors in interest have been in open, continuous, exclusive, and notorious possession and occupation of alienable and disposable lands of the public domain under bona fide claim of ownership since June 12, 1945 or earlier. So we are talking here in the first, uh, in, sec in uh, paragraph one of section 14, we are talking here of alienable and disposable lands of the public domain, which have been in open, continuous, exclusive, notorious possession and occupation of a certain individual under bona fide claim of ownership since June 12, 1945 or earlier. Okay. Number two, those who have acquired ownership of private lands by prescription under the provisions of existing laws. So when we speak of prescription, it may either be 10 years if it is in good faith or 30 years regardless of good or bad faith. Okay, But we are talking here of private lands. So meaning those which were already considered as private lands uh, those which were declared by the government already as private lands were the patrimonial properties of the state. Okay, those who have acquired ownership of private lands or abandoned riverbeds by right of accession or action under existing laws, those who have acquired ownership of lands in any other manner provided for by law. So these persons may file for original registration of the subject parcel of land. Of course, we have already discussed that the uh, RTC of the province or city where the land is situated, okay, is the venue for the filing of the said application for original registration. Okay. Now, what is the proceeding in original registration proceedings? Okay, uh, first there will be a notice of initial hearing and the requirement that the notice of hearing be published. The purpose of which is to provide information, okay, uh, to the entire world of the 
uh, application for registration. So the court shall issue an order setting the date and hour of the initial hearing. Okay, the public shall be given notice of the initial hearing through publication, through mailing, or through post and through posting. Okay, now um, the purpose of the notice, as I've said, is to inform the public that there is this application for original registration in order to bind the entire world with respect to that proceeding. Now, any person may appear and file an opposition on or before the date of the initial hearing. The opposition shall state all the objections to the application and shall set forth the interest claimed by the party filing the same. Okay, now, what if there is no opposition? Then the court will order uh, a general default. Upon motion of the defendant, the court will order a default against the general public. So meaning, uh, there is no opposition, so an order of general default will be issued, and the petitioner or the plaintiff will be given the chance to present its evidence ex parte. Okay, so a hearing will be held, uh, and after the hearing and or the presentation of evidence, the court will issue a judgment confirming title. Okay, the applicant or the oppositor has sufficient title proper for registration. Judgment shall be rendered confirming the title of the applicant or the oppositor to the land. Okay, so after the judgment has become final and executory, it becomes final upon the expiration of 30 days to be counted from the date of receipt of the notice of judgment. Okay, so after the judgment, there will be a decree of registration. Okay, and the corresponding certificate of title shall be issued in favor of the person a judge entitled to registration. So the decree of registration shall bind the land and quiet title to the land. It shall be conclusive upon and against all persons, including the national government. That is the reason why land registration proceedings are proceedings in rem. It is binding against all persons. Once a decree of registration is issued, okay, it binds all persons with respect to the property subject of the application for registration. Now, can it be appealed? Can the decree of registration be appealed? Okay. Um, the decree of registration shall not be reopened or revised by reason of absence, minority, by any person adversely affected, nor by any proceeding in any court, subject, however, to the right of any person, including the government the, uh, or branches thereof, deprived of the land uh, or of any estate interested therein by such adjudication or confirmation of title obtained by actual fraud to file in the proper RTC a petition for a opening and review of the decree of registration not later than one year from and after the date of entry of the decree of registration. But in no case shall such petition be entertained by the court when an innocent purchaser for value has acquired the land or an interest therein whose rights may be prejudiced. So upon the expiration of the period of one year, the decree of registration and the certificate of title shall become incontrovertible. So you may apply for the reopening of the decree within one year from date of entry. After such period has lapsed, the decree shall be considered as incontrovertible. Okay? Now, certificate of title. Upon issuance of the decree, okay, the court will... Uh, require or order or direct the RD or the Register of Deeds okay, to, uh, to uh, issue a certificate of title in favor of the applicant. 
Okay, so after the judgment has become final, the court shall within 15 days from entry issue an order directing the commissioner to issue the corresponding decree of registration and certificate of title. So the owner's duplicate certificate of title shall be delivered to the registered owner or to his duly authorized representative. Remember always that when a certificate of title is issued, it comes in pairs. Okay, the original one will be kept okay, on file with the register of deeds and the duplicate owner's cup shall be kept by the registered owner or his authorized representative. A statutory liens affecting title. Okay, under Section 44 of PD 1529. Every registered owner receiving a certificate of title or a decree of registration shall hold the same free from all encumbrances except those noted in the title and the following encumbrances which may be subsisting. Okay, such as liens, claims, or rights arising or existing under the laws and the constitution of the Philippines, which are not by law required to appear of record in the register of the Example would be the easement of lateral and subjacent support. It is a lien or an encumbrance or a limitation on property, but it is not required to be annotated in the title. Unpaid real estate taxes, for example, levied and assessed within two years immediately preceding the acquisition of any right over the land by an innocent purchaser for value. Any public highway or private way established or recognized by law or any government irrigation canal or lateral thereof. Any disposition of the property or limitation on the use thereof pursuant to PD number 27 or any other law or regulations on agrarian reform. So these liens, okay, although not appearing on the title, are considered as encumbrances on the title, even though they are not annotated on the title itself. Okay, Section 47 is another important provision of PD 1529. No title to registered land in derogation of the title of the registered owner shall be acquired by prescription or adverse possession. You must remember that when uh, a property is already covered by the torrent system, it cannot anymore be acquired through prescription or adverse possession. So no matter how long the possession is and no matter... Uh, what the nature of the possession is, okay, it cannot be susceptible of acquisition through prescription. Okay, further, Section 48 of PD 1529, uh, a certificate of title shall not be subject to collateral attack. It cannot be altered, modified, or cancelled except in a direct proceeding in accordance with law. So, the attack to the title must be direct. It cannot be attacked collaterally in another proceeding wherein the title to the land is not the subject matter of the litigation. It cannot be a side issue. It must be attacked directly through a proceeding which is instituted for the purpose. Okay, Splitting or consolidation of titles. A registered owner of several distinct parcels of land embraced in and covered by a certificate of title desiring in lieu thereof separate certificates, each containing one or more parcels may file a request for that purpose with the register of And the latter, upon the surrender of the owner's duplicate, shall cancel it together with, with its original and issue thereof separate certificates of title as desired. Okay, so we have different kinds of dealings with respect to registered plans. There are voluntary dealings and there are involuntary dealings. So with respect to voluntary dealings with registered land, okay, 
uh, the foremost example of which would be say, okay? registered land may convey, the, uh, the, the registered, the owner of a registered land may convey mortgage, lease, charge, or otherwise deal thereof in accordance with existing law. So it may be a same, it may be a mortgage, it may be a lease, or any other charges, okay, as long as it is voluntarily made by the registered owner. Okay? No deed, mortgage, lease, or other voluntary instrument except a will purporting to convey or affect registered land shall take effect as a conveyance but shall operate only as a contract between the parties and as evidence of authority for the register of deeds to make the registration. So it is the act of registration which shall be uh, oper the operative act to convey or affect the land insofar as third persons are concerned. So with respect to voluntary dealings on register land, whether it be a sale, a lease, or any other encumbrance, it must be registered for, for the said transaction to bind third persons. So uh, the, the registration shall be constructive notice upon third persons. Okay? And there is also a necessity to present the owner's duplicate certificate uh, to the register of deeds for the register of deeds to annotate the said voluntary dealing on the duplicate certificate of title. Okay, mortgage or leases of registered land. Uh, the owner of registered land, which is mortgage or lease, uh, shall be executed in a form sufficient in law. And uh, such mortgage or lease and all instruments which assign, extend, discharge, or otherwise deal with the mortgage or lease shall be registered and shall take effect upon the title only from the time of registration. So again, it is a reiteration of the need for registration to bind third persons with respect to such mortgages and leases. Okay? A mortgage or lease on registered land may be discharged or cancelled by means of an instrument executed by the mortgage or mortgagee or lessee in a form sufficient. In law. So if the mortgage is already discharged or released, and there is a need to present the deed of uh, release of mortgage again to the register of deeds for that same document to be annotated on the duplicate owner certificate as well as the original which is on file with the register. Okay, foreclosures of mortgages. If the mortgage was foreclosed judicially, a certificate or final order of the court confirming the sale shall be registered with the register of deeds. Where the right of redemption exists, the order confirming the sale shall be registered by brief memorandum upon the certificate of title. The certificate or deed of redemption shall be filed with the register of deeds and a brief memorandum shall be made. If the property is not redeemed, the final deed of sale executed by the sheriff in favor of the purchaser shall be registered with the register of deeds whereupon the title of the mortgager shall be cancelled and a new certificate issued in the name of the purchaser. So that is with respect to judicial foreclosure of mortgages. How about extrajudicial? A certificate of sale executed by the officer who conducted the sale shall be filed with the register of deeds who shall make a brief memorandum thereof on the certificate of title. So in the event of redemption, the same rule okay, will apply provided in the second paragraph. In case of non-redemption, the purchaser at foreclosure sale shall file with the register of deeds either a final deed of sale or a um, his sworn statement attesting to the fact of non-redemption, whereupon the register of deeds shall issue a new certificate in favor of the purchase. Okay. Now we go to involuntary deeds. So meaning when we say involuntary, uh, it is not the act 
which emanated from the registered owner. But it can be uh, from the government or from any other person. Okay. Like, for example, attachment, adverse claim, notice, notices of misspendings. Okay. Attachments. Let us first go to attachments under Section 69. An attachment or a copy of any writ, order, or process intended to create or preserve any lien, status, right, or attachment shall be filed and registered in the registry of deeds in the province or city where, where the land lies. Okay, so uh, what are the situations in which there can be an attachment in criminal cases involving fraud, for example? The uh, complainant can apply for a writ of preliminary attachment to ensure the execution of the civil liability or the judgment. Okay, so in which case properties of a person, of the accused, may be attached. Okay, so in which case, in order for that attachment to be binding, shall be filed and registered in the registry of Another involuntary dealing is adverse claim. Whoever claims any part or interest in registered land adverse to the registered owner arising subsequent to the date of original registration may make a statement in writing setting his alleged right or interest and how or under whom acquired a reference to the number of the certificate of title of the registered owner, the name of the registered owner, and a description of the land in which the right or interest is claimed. Okay, so this in fact a registration of your adverse claim to the land. Okay, there is also a requirement to surrender the duplicate owner's certificate in involuntary. But what if the registered owner refuses? Okay, so Section 71 tells us that if an attachment or other lien in the nature of involuntary dealings uh, and the duplicate certificate is not presented at the time of registration, the register of deeds shall send notice by mail to the, by mail to the registered owner stating that such paper has been registered and requesting him to send or produce his duplicate certificate so that a memorandum of the attachment or other liens may be made. But what if the registered owner refuses? Then the register of deeds shall report the matter to the court and the court shall, after notice, enter an order to the owner to produce his certificate of title at a time and place named there. Enforcement of liens on registered land. Okay, whenever any registered land is taken on execution or taken or sold for taxes or for any assessment or to enforce a lien, okay, any execution or copy or the uh, executive officer's return or any deed, demand, certificate, or affidavit or other instrument to enforce such liens shall be filed with the RD of the province or the city where the land lies and registered in the registration. How about notices of dispendants? Okay, no action to recover possession of real estate or to quiet title thereto or to remove clouds upon the title or for partition or other proceedings of any kind in court directly affecting title to the land, or the use or occupation thereof, or the buildings thereon, and no judgment and no proceedings to vacate or reverse any judgment shall have any effect upon registered land as against persons other than the parties thereto, unless a memorandum or notice stating the institution of such action or proceeding. So, with respect to these kinds of actions, ha, an action to recover possession of real property or to quiet title to real property or to remove clouds upon the title or an, an action for partition or any other 
kind of case which directly affect title to the land. Okay, the, the interested parties okay, may file a notice of dispendence to serve as a constructive notice to the whole world that this case is involved in this, this land is involved in this case, either uh, an action to recover possession, for partition, to quiet title, etc. Okay. Uh, however, how do you cancel the notice of dispendence? Before final judgment, a notice of dispendence may be canceled upon order of the court after showing that the notice is for the purpose of molesting the adverse party or that it is not necessary to protect the rights of the party who caused it to be registered. Okay, however, it must be upon order of the court. So there must be a corresponding motion uh, to cancel the notice of respect. Replacement of duplicate owners, copy, and reconstitution of lost or destroyed torrents title. So what if the duplicate owner's copy of your title has been lost? What is the procedure for replacement? So in case of loss of an owner's duplicate certificate of title, uh, if it is lost or destroyed or cannot be produced, by a person applying for the entry of a new certificate to him or for the registration of any instrument, a sworn statement of the fact of loss or destruction may be filed by the registered owner. So the first uh, thing that you must do, okay, in case of loss or destruction of the duplicate owner's copy is to submit to the register of deeds an affidavit of the loss or destruction of the duplicate owner's cup. Okay, then you file a petition okay, to the court which has jurisdiction over the property, or over the location of the real property for the replacement of the duplicate owner's copy because it is either lost or destroyed. Okay. So upon the petition of the registered owner, the court may after notice and due hearing direct the issuance of a new duplicate certificate which shall contain a memorandum of the fact that it is issued in place of the lost duplicate certificate but shall in all respects be entitled to life, faith, and credit as the original duplicate. Okay. How about reconstitution of lost or destroyed title? Okay, we will discuss that in detail when we go to Republic Act number 26, which is uh, what we will discuss now. Okay, uh, there are two types of titles, original certificates of titles and transfer certificate of titles. Now, Republic Act number 26 deals with the procedure. Okay, for the reconstitution or replacement of these titles. Remember what I have said uh, a while ago? Okay, uh, when, when, uh, uh, when a certificate of title is issued, it is always issued in pairs. Okay, the original certificate of title is the one which is on file with the register of this. And then another Twin title, the duplicate certificate of title, is the one which is issued to the registered owner and is kept by the registered owner. So we have already discussed the procedure for the replacement of the duplicate certificate of title. If it is lost or destroyed, you execute an affidavit of loss or destruction and then you apply for the replacement or the issuance of a new or a second owner's duplicate certificate of title. But what if it is the original certificate of title that was lost? Or what if both were lost? Meaning the original on file with the register of deeds and the duplicate certificate which is on file 
with the registered owner. What if both were lost? What can the registered owner do? Okay, so the remedies are provided under Republic Act number 26. There are actually uh, two titles that are involved for reconstitution, one of which is the, an original certificate of title, and the other one is a transfer certificate of title. When we speak of an original certificate of title, it is the first title which is issued involving the property, involving the real property. It's the first title which is issued from the order or decree of registration. Okay, so that is considered as an original certificate of title. If it is transferred to another person and the original certificate of title is cancelled and another title is issued to the person who acquired the property, you call that a transfer certificate of title. It is no longer an original title because that title is derived from the original certificate of title. So with respect to original certificates of title, how do you reconstitute it? If the original certificate of title on file with the register of this is lost or was burned or was already destroyed, so how do you replace it? What are the source documents that will be the basis for the reproduction or replacement of the original certificate of title which was on file with the register of deeds. So section two of Republic Act number 26 tells us the that these are the documents that will the basis that will be the basis for the replacement title that will be issued in lieu of the original title which was lost or destroyed okay first one is the owner's duplicates of the certificate of title diba? when when we, uh, as i have said the the registered owner has his owner's duplicate certificate of title so the owner's duplicate certificate of title will be the one which will be the basis for the issuance of a reconstituted title, which will be the one which will be kept by the RD in lieu of the lost or destroyed OST. Okay, so that is the first. The second source document is the co-owner's mortgages or lessees duplicate of the certificate of title. So if the co-owner has a certificate of title, then it can be the basis also of the reconstitution. Okay? C, a certified copy of the certificate of title previously issued by the register of deeds or by a legal custodian thereof. At present, we have this electronic copy of the title. Okay? So the electronic copy of the title is actually a certified true copy of the certificate of title. When you have that, it can also be the basis of the reconstitution. Okay, letter D, an authenticated copy of the degree of registration or patent uh, uh, pursuant to which the original certificate of title was issued. So if you have an authenticated copy, okay, meaning uh, authenticated or certified by the registry of deeds or authenticated copy issued by the court of the decree of registration or patent. Because we're talking here of original certificate of title pursuant to which the original certificate of title was issued. That could also be the basis for reconstitution. Okay, letter E, a document on file in the registry of deeds by which the property the description of which is given in said document is mortgage, lease, or encumbered, or an authenticated copy of said document showing that its original had been registered. Okay, so if, for example, there is this deed of mortgage, okay, and the technical description of the property is uh, 
in the said uh, deed of mortgage and that it was uh, given to the register of this and that it was registered in the as or annotated okay in the uh, uh, original title on file so that document can also be the basis of a reconstitution okay any other document letter f which in the judgment of the court is sufficient and proper basis for reconstituting the lost or destroyed certificate of title. So with respect to transfer certificates of title, okay, these are the documents which can be the source documents, okay, that can be the basis for the reconstituted title. Okay, letter A is the owner's duplicate of the certificate of title, which is the same as the OCT, right? So the owner's duplicate certificate of title kept by the registered owner can be the basis for reconstitution. Okay, the co-owners, mortgages, or lessees duplicate of the certificate of title. Letter C, a certified true copy of the certificate of title previously issued by the register of deeds or by a legal custodian thereof. Again, the electronic copy, okay, which is considered as a certified true copy of the title which is on file with the R. Okay, but uh, you must have <coughs> secured it before the title was lost. Okay, because after the title is lost, the RD can no longer issue a uh, certified true copy. Okay, letter D, the deed of transfer or other document on file in the registry of deeds containing the description of the property or an authenticated copy thereof showing that its original had been registered and for so on to which the loss <coughs> or destroyed transfer certificate of title was issued. Okay, so uh, considering that this is not <coughs> original certificate of title, so any deed of convenience, for example, a deed of sale, which contains the technical description of the property <coughs> and said deed of convenience has been registered <coughs> before the title was lost. And pursuant to which <coughs> the loss or destroyed transfer certificate of title was issued. That can also be the basis of the reconstitution. Letter E, a document on file in the register of deeds by which the property, the description of which is given in the said document, is mortgage leased or encumbered, <coughs> showing that its original had been registered. Again, with respect to voluntary dealings with registered land, as long as there is a description and that a particular deed or contract has been registered in the registry of can be the basis for reconstitution. And letter F, the catch-all, any other document which in the judgment of the court is sufficient and proper basis for reconstituting the lost or destroyed certificate of title. Okay. So there can also be administrative reconstitution. So liens and other encumbrances affecting a destroyed or lost certificate of title shall be reconstituted from such of the sources, uh, such as the following, annotations or memoranda appearing on the owners or co-owners mortgages or lessees duplicate, registered documents on file in the registry of deeds or authenticated copies thereof showing that the originals have been registered, and any do other document which in the judgment of the court is sufficient and proper basis for reconstituting the liens or encumbrances affecting the, by the property covered by the loss or destroyed certificate of title. So with respect to petitions for reconstitution from sources enumerated, 
in sections 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, and or 4A. Okay, the petition shall be accompanied with the necessary sources for a constitution and with an affidavit of the registered owner stating that no deed or other instrument affecting the property had been presented for registration or if there is any the nature thereof. The date of its presentation as well as the names of the parties. If the reconstitution is to be made from any of the sources enumerated in section 2B or 3B, the affidavit should state that the owner's duplicate has been lost or destroyed and the circumstances under which it was lost or destroyed. Thereupon, the register of deeds shall uh, no valid reason to the contrary existing reconstitute the certificate of title as provided in the staff. How about judicial reconstitution, which is our topic, really our topic. Okay. Um, a registered owner desiring to have his reconstituted certificate of title may file his petition with the proper RTC giving his reason. And the court shall again, considering that the proceedings are in REM, cause a notice of the petition to be published in the official gazette and to be posted on the main entrance of the provincial building uh, and the municipal building of the municipality or city in which the land lies, at least 30 days prior to the date of death. The petitioner shall submit proof of the publication and the posting of the notice. Okay, so how about those petitions for a constitution from sources enumerated in sections 2C, 2F, 3C, 3D, 3E, and or 3F. So ito yung mga other sources of, recon of uh, uh, other documents which in the judgment of the court may be sufficient basis for a constitution. Okay, the petition shall state the following, that the owner's duplicate of the certificate of title was lost or destroyed, that there was no co-owner's mortgages less is duplicate issued, that the location, area, and boundaries of the property, the nature and description of the buildings or improvements, the names and addresses of the occupants or persons in possession of the property, a detailed description of the encumbrances, if any, a statement that, that no deeds or other instruments affecting the property have been presented for registration. That in case of reconstitution is to be made exclusively from the sources enumerated in sections 2F or 3F, the petition shall further be accompanied with a plan and technical description of the property, duly approved by the Chief of General Land Registration Board. So these are the additional allegations as well as documents that are needed if you are uh, reconstitution, reconstituting from the sources enumerated in sections 2 and 3 C to F. So the main basis for reconstitution is the owner's duplicate certificate. So what if the owner's duplicate certificate is lost? So not only the original certificate on file with the RD, but also the duplicate owner's certificate is also lost. So what would be your basis? Okay, You can rely on the sources enumerated in sections 2 and 3 C to F. But for you to be able to reconstitute the title, Okay, the law prescribes certain additional documents, such as the uh, plan and technical description of the property, as well as the allocation that the owner's duplicate certificate was already lost. Okay, you are also required to provide the names of the persons, uh, the name and addresses of the persons adjoining your property as well as if there are buildings or improvements thereon, okay, the location as well as the area and boundaries of the property. 
Again, considering the proceedings are in them, okay, there is a publication and posting of the petition. Publication in the official gazette and posting in the provincial and the municipal building. So if the court finds that the documents presented are sufficient and proper to warrant the reconstitution, and that the petitioner is the registered owner of the property or has an interest therein, said certificate was in force at the time it was lost or destroyed, and that the description area and boundaries of the property are substantially the same, the same as those contained in the loss or destroyed certificate of title an order of reconstitution shall be okay? So the first and foremost thing that you have to establish in a reconstitution case is the loss or destruction of the original title or file with the register of deeds. If you are basing your source document in sections 2 and 3, C to F, then you have to also prove that the owner's duplicate was lost. Okay? And then after you have uh, established the said facts, you have to present the source document. Okay? Source document, which is either a duplicate owner certificate of title, or it can be a deed of conveyance, uh, that the technical description of the land is there. Okay? And you can also present a certified true copy, which is previously issued by the Register of Deeds, Containing uh, concerning the title of the property, that the title was still in force at the time that it was lost or destroyed. You cannot reconstitute a cancelled title. Okay? And also that the description area and boundaries of the land are substantially the same. That is the reason why in petitions for a constitution, the court always requires the land registration authority to file its comment. Okay, because they will have to check uh, the technical description if it is really the uh, if it does not overlap with any other property. Okay, we go now go to the cases or jurisprudence. Okay, Bravo versus Makabalo. So in this case, Elvira filed a petition for issuance of second owner's copy of a uh, parcel of, of the of title number 23-2003, alleging that Reynaldo, the registered owner of the lot, mortgaged the lot. Okay, so uh, the owner's copy of said title was surrendered to her when the property was mortgaged and that subsequently she discovered that the title was missing. Okay, however, one, the father of Elvira filed a petition for annulment of judgment, claiming that the RTC has no jurisdiction to issue an order granting the petition. Because in reality, the duplicate owner's copy was not really lost, but was actually in his possession. Okay. Remember that in a petition for issuance of second owner's duplicate copy in replacement of the lost one, the only issues to be resolved are the following. Whether or not the original owner's duplicate copy had, had indeed been lost and whether the petitioner seeking the issuance of a new owner's duplicate title is the registered owner or other person in interest. The ownership of the property is not an issue. So the RTC acting only as a land registration court has no jurisdiction to pass upon the question of actual ownership of the land covered by the laws owners to be taken. Okay, so uh, when you file a petition for issuance of second owners to be taken up, you only have to establish two facts. First is the loss or destruction of the owners to be taken certificate and your right to the land covered by the lost or destroyed uh, title. Okay? So when you have satisfied both, then the corresponding uh, petition will be granted and the register of deeds will be required to issue another owner's duplicate certificate. The ownership of the land, if it is 
being con contested by the oppositor should be threshed out in another proceeding, but not in a petition for the issuance of second votes. So given the fact that the owner's duplicate copy was not in fact lost, the RTC evidently had no jurisdiction to issue the order directing the issuance of a new owner's duplicate. You must remember that when uh, the fact of loss, it was overthrown by evidence showing that the duplicate owner's copy was not in fact lost or destroyed, but was actually existing. The court ceases to have jurisdiction over the petition for the issuance of duplicate owner's copy of title. Okay? Because the first and prime requisite which is the uh, establishment of the fact that uh, the duplicate owner's copy was indeed lost or destroyed, okay, has been overthrown by the production of the actual duplicate owner's certificate of title. Okay, Biliote versus Tollis. Email the file, the A petition for the issuance of new owners, duplicate certificate of title. She submitted a copy of deed of extrajudicial settlement of the estate of a deceased person, whereby Dorotea allegedly conveyed her share in the subject property to respondents Imelda and Adelaide. So Imelda and Adelaide executed a deed of absolute sale conveying the entire property to spouses pada. Now, petitioner filed before the Court of Appeals a petition for annulment of judgment seeking to annul the decision of the RTC granting the respondent Imelda's petition for issuance of a new owner's duplicate certificate. On, on the ground that the owner's duplicate was not lost but had all the while been in the possession of her brother, William. Okay, remember that sections 18 and 19 of R826 applies only in cases of reconstitution of lost or destroyed original certificates of title, while section 109 of PD 1529 governs petitions for issuance of duplicate certificates of title which are lost or destroyed. When the owner's duplicate certificate of title has not been lost, but is in fact in the possession of another person, the reconstituted certificate is void because the court that rendered the decision had no jurisdiction. Reconstitution can validly be made only in cases of the loss of the original certificate. Thus, the fact of loss of the duplicate certificate is jurisdiction. Okay? Um, remember that always when it comes to issuance of duplicate owner certificate of title, when it is in fact proven that uh, the, uh, or the owner's duplicate certificate of title has not been lost or destroyed but is in the possession of another person, the court loses jurisdiction over the petition for issuance of duplicate certificate of title. In a petition for issuance of new owner's duplicate copy, uh, in lieu of the one allegedly lost, the RTC acting only as a land registration court has no jurisdiction to pass upon the question of actual ownership of the land covered by the loss owner's duplicate copy. The Court of Appeals is limited only to the determination of whether the trial court had jurisdiction over the petition for issuance of new owner's duplicate copy. The only fact that had to be established was whether or not the original owner's duplicate copy is still in existence. Thus, the dispute regarding the issue of ownership over the subject property, as well as whether the spouses badar are in fact purchasers in good faith, will have to be threshed out in a more appropriate procedure. The case of Republic versus Ciruelas, which is again a case involving the issuance of duplicate owner's copy. So it was granted the petition for issuance of duplicate owners. The Republic maintains that Dominador has no authority to either institute the action on behalf of Rogelio 
or sign the verification and certification because the SPA was not registered with the register. So there is there is this registered owner who executed a special power of attorney authorizing his brother, Dominador, to file the petition for him. Okay. Whether Dominador as attorney in fact had the authority to file a petition for new owner's duplicate on behalf of Rogelio and execute the verification and certification and whether the fact of loss of the owner's duplicate copy was established. Okay, so by virtue of the SPA executed by Rogelio in favor of Dominador, a contract of agency was created between them with Rogelio as the principal and Dominador as the agent. So in a contract of agency, the agent binds himself to represent another. So by this legal fiction of representation, the actual or legal absence of the principal is converted into his legal or juridical presence. So a plain reading of the provision does not state that the registration of an SPA is a prerequisite to its validity. So even though the SPA executed by the registered owner in favor of Dominador was not registered uh, in the RD, okay, it does not lose its validity. Records show that the petition was published once a week for three consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general circulation, uh, was set for hearing and announced to the public uh, as for the purpose of the registration of the SPA was accomplished, the court finds no reason to invalidate dominators. So there was, so see, even if the SPA was not registered, the purpose of the SPA, the registration of the SPA, which is to bind the public, has already been accomplished because the uh, petition was published. It was announced in open court. So the public was informed. Okay, so the only questions to be resolved are whether or not the original owner's duplicate copy has indeed been lost and whether the petitioner seeking the issuance of a new owner's duplicate title is the registered owner or other person in interest. So Section 109 of PD 1529 has two distinct requirements. So the first paragraph refers to the notice requirement. Uh, submission of an affidavit of loss to the register of deeds. And the second paragraph pertains to the procedure for the replacement, filing a petition for the issuance of a new duplicate certificate. So the second paragraph contemplates the conduct of a full-blown hearing where the petitioner must prove the fact of loss or theft through preponderance of evidence. Mere compliance with the notice requirement and the filing of the petition does not automatically entitle the registered owner to a replacement duplicate certificate. So in this case, the court finds that the fact of loss was not established by the required quantum of proof. The only evidence presented as proof of loss is uh, the affidavit of loss and dominador's testimony. Both of them constitute hearsay evidence and cannot be given probably. Remember that in this case, the one who testified was Dominador, but the one who executed the affidavit of loss was the registered owner. So a witness can testify only as to the facts within his personal knowledge. So the one who executed the affidavit was not presented in open court. And Dominador, the one who was authorized, to, uh, by the registered owner to testify, uh, to file and testify in this case, does not have personal knowledge because he was not the one who kept and who was able to lose the uh, duplicate certificate. Okay, as Rogelio, the registered owner, did not take the witness stand, he neither authenticated this affidavit of loss nor was he cross examined. So there was no proof that Dominador had personal knowledge on the circumstances surrounding the safekeeping and subsequent loss of Rogelio's owner's duplicate certificate. Okay, Kamitan versus Fidelity Investment. Again, this is a case where the issuance of a duplicate, uh, second owner's duplicate copy. 
Respondent Fidelity Investment filed a petition for annulment of judgment and cancellation of the title. According to Fidelity, it purchased the property covered by the subject certificate of title. Upon execution of the deed of absolute sale and the payment in full of the purchase price, the vendors delivered to Fidelity their owner's duplicate copy, which it, it has been in possession ever since. So the core issue is the validity of the issuance by the RTC of a new owner's duplicate co copy of the TCP in favor of the petitioners. We proof that the owner's duplicate copy of the TCP was in the possession of fidelity. The RTC's decision was annulled. In a catena of cases, we have consistently ruled that if an owner's duplicate copy has not been lost, but is in fact in the possession of another person, the reconstituted title is void, as the court rendering the decision never acquires jurisdiction. Consequently, the decision may be attacked any time. Okay? We now go to the cases affecting reconstitution of title. Okay, Our, the Republic versus Demetila. So in this case, the Jaws are the registered owners of three parcels of land. Okay. The owner's duplicate was destroyed when the Angat River overflowed and caused a big flood. Okay. The original copy was among the documents destroyed by fire that raised the office of the RD of Bulacan. So there were two titles that were missing. The duplicate copy of the registered owners, which was lost in a flood. And the original copy of the title on file with the RD, which was lost in a fire. So, Candido filed a petition for a constitution and the issuance of a new owner's duplicate copy. So, the reconstitution of a certificate of title denotes restoration in the original form and condition of a lost or destroyed instrument attesting the title of a person to a piece of land. The purpose of the reconstitution of title is to have, after observing the procedures prescribed by law, the title reproduced in exactly the same way it has been when the loss or destruction occurred. So the loss or destroyed document referred to is the one that is in the custody of the register of deeds. When reconstitution is ordered, this document is replaced with a new one the reconstituted title that basically reproduces the original. After the reconstitution, the owner is issued a duplicate copy of the reconstituted title. Okay. Si Huko versus PNB. In this case, De Leon mortgaged the lots to Si Huko. The issuance of new transfer certificate of titles in the name of De Leon, in with the mortgage in favor of Sihuko, duly annotated on the box thereof. So there are two titles which were newly issued. Okay, the titles in the name of De Leon with the mortgage to Sihuko uh, annotated in the back. So the corresponding owner's duplicate transfer certificates were, by agreement, entrusted and kept by Sihuko. Subsequently, De Leon, filed a verified petition for the constitution of title and issuance of duplicate owner's copy. So the trial court dispensed with the publication and issued an order directing the RD to make the reconstitution applied for. Okay. Si Huko asked the court to declare its order illegal. Okay? Uh, the only issue is whether or not Section 18 of RA 26 is applicable in this case. So in case a certificate of title considered lost or destroyed is found or recovered, the same shall prevail over the reconstituted certificate of title. That is Section 18. The destroyed or lost certificate of title which may be reconstituted is one that was in force at the time of the loss or destruction. This, however, is not true in this case. The law neither contemplates nor permits the reconstitution of the of cancelled certificates of title, which were no longer in force. Because what De Leon was trying 
to reconstitute are those which were already cancelled. Okay. Uh, what De Leon did was to ignore si Huko, conceal from the trial court the issuance of the originals of the titles and make the court believe that the two lots were still covered by their previous certificates of title. So you must remember that when you apply for reconstitution, okay, they, they must pertain to the titles which are still enforced up to the present. You cannot apply for a reconstitution of a cancelled certificate of title. A Republic versus Court of Appeal. In this case, fire got at the office of the Register of Deeds in Bulacan. And then a petition for reconstitution was uh, applied for. Okay, so the following certification of publication issued by the Director of the National Printing Office However, they did not submit the actual copies of the official set. So what they submitted only is the uh, certificate of publication issued by the National Printing Office. The uh, uh, actual copies of the publication okay, was not submitted. Okay. Uh, in petitions for reconstitution of title, you must remember that this is an in rem proceeding. So publication is one of the means by which the court acquires jurisdiction over the petition. Okay, so what will happen if you were not able to submit the actual copies of the publication? Does that invalidate the proceedings? Okay, so reconstitution of title under RA 26 is an action in rem, which means it is one directed not only against particular persons, but against the thing itself. So its object is to bar indifferently all who might be minded to make any objection against the right sought to be enforced. Hence, the judgment is binding upon the whole world. The jurisdictional requirements of publication posting and service of notice as provided in R826 is required. They seek to provide constructive notice to the whole world of the in-rem reconstitution proceedings. Their pur purpose is to apprise all interested parties of the existence of such action and to give them ample time to intervene in the proceedings. They bring in the whole world as a party to the, to the case and best the court with jurisdiction to hear and decide it. Okay. As to the publication requirement, RA 26 obligates the petitioner to prove two things. First, its order giving due course to the petition for reconstitution and setting it for hearing was published twice in two consecutive issues of the official gazette and such publication was made at least 30 days prior to the date of the hearing. So in the case at bench, private respondents were able to show both elements through the certification of the director of the National Printing Office. So mere submission of the subject official gazette would have evidenced only the first element. So this court has consistently accepted the probative value of certifications of the director of the NPO in reconstitution cases. So even though he was not able to submit the actual publication, he was able to prove that it, it, it was in fact published and that it was published 30 days before the date of the hearing. Next case is Republic versus Abelianosa. So this one again is a petition for reconstitution. However, Valero was unable to surrender the owner's duplicate copy of the titles because the documents were lost beyond retrieval. Certification of the Register of Deeds of Lucena City, which states that the titles are among those burned uh, in the city hall. The restoration in the original form and condition of a lost or destroyed torrent certificate of title attesting the title of a person to register land. The purpose of reconstitution is to enable, after observing the procedures prescribed by law, the reproduction of the lost or destroyed title in the same form, 
and in exactly the same way it was at the time of the lost or destruction. For the judicial reconstitution uh, of valid original title, Section 2 of RA 26 enumerates the acceptable basis. So the following requisites must be complied with for an order of reconstitution to be issued. So these are the requirements for reconstitution. That the certificate of title was lost or destroyed. That the documents presented by the petitioner are sufficient and proper to warrant reconstitution. That the petitioner is the registered owner of the property. That the certificate of title was in force at the time that it was lost or destroyed. And that the description area and boundaries of the property are substantially the same as those contained in the lost or destroyed certificate of title. So the foregoing does not affect the nature of the action that necessitates another posting and publication. So the revisions merely refer to the substitution of parties in view of the death of the spouse's manado. These are minor matters that simply tend to assist and guide the RTC in conducting the proceedings. Hence, the earlier posting and publication of the petition for reconstitution were sufficient to best RTC with jurisdiction. So, if the amendments subsequent to the publication are mere minor matters, okay, there is no need to republish again the petition. Okay, that is what Abelianosa tells us. Okay, uh, Aliyama versus Republic. Again, this is a case for judicial reconstitution. Both the original and the duplicate copies of the title were burned when the town of Holo was attacked by rebels. So the provincial fiscal of Sulu opposed the petition. Okay, because according to the state, notice of hearing was defective. Okay, the requirements were not followed, stated in Section 13. The notice of hearing failed to state the name of Aliyama, the names of the occupants or persons in possession of the property, owners of adjoining properties, and the location, area, and boundaries of the property. If no notice of the date of hearing of a reconstitution case is served on a possessor or one having an interest, he is deprived of his day in court, and the order of reconstitution is null and void. Notice of publication is not sufficient, but such notice must be actually sent or delivered to the parties affected by the reconstitution. You must uh, know, class, that when you issue a notice of hearing, okay, you must state the date of hearing so that the interested parties can appear and oppose the petition. Okay, if there was no notice of hearing, if there, uh, meaning if there was no date and time of hearing stated in the notice of hearing, then that notice of hearing will not, uh, that, that notice of hearing will not be sufficient to vest the court with jurisdiction because the, the uh, uh, parties who are interested will not be notified when they should file their opposition. Republic versus Boo. Again, this is a case for a constitution. It is a relatively new case. It's 2022. Okay, petitions for a constitution of several lots alleging that sometime in 1930, a decision declaring that the Boo are registered owners of the following lots under several decrees were issued by the CFI of Cebu, directing the registration of the lots in the name of the Boox. So the original certificate of titles were allegedly issued to the Boox. The, however, the OCTs were lost during World War II. So whether or not the respondents are entitled to the reconstitution of the OCTs, so the Act specifically provides the special requirements and mode of procedure that must be followed before the court can properly act, assume, and acquire jurisdiction 
over the petition and grant the reconstitution. These requirements are mandatory. The petition for reconstitution must allege certain specific jurisdictional facts. The notice of hearing must be published in the official gazette and posted in particular places. The requirements in Section 12 on the contents of the petition and Section 13 on the publication of the notice of petition are mandatory and jurisdictional. Although respondents stated in their petition that MEPSA possesses a certain lot while the MIAA occupies a certain lots, they failed to indicate their present addresses. So despite being aware that the subject lots are in the material possession of the MIAA and MEPSA, respondents did not stipulate if a building or improvements which do not belong to the BOOCs are erected in the subject lots. Verily, the petition for reconstitution is fatally defective due to the presence of severe infirmities. It did not indicate the number of the lost or destroyed TCTs. The failure to identify the exact title or number defeats the purpose of the twin notice and publication requirements. Since persons who have interest in the property or who may otherwise be affected by the reconstitution would not be able to identify the said property. So, uh, the amended notice also failed to indicate the following. The names of MEPSA and MIA, who are the occupants and possessors of the lots, the area and boundaries of the lots, the date on which all persons having interest must appear. <clears throat> so what is important in this case is that the title number <coughs> must be stated or mentioned in the notice of meeting. So uh, aside from the date and time of the notice of meeting, the title number of the uh, lots involved must also be mentioned. <laughs> Unfortunately, however, these pieces of evidence are not adequate proof that certificates of title were in fact issued to the box and that the same were in force at the time that they were lost or destroyed. So at best, the CFI Cebu decisions and decrees only prove that <laughs> The, the lots were awarded to the Boox and that the lots were to be registered in their names pursuant to the Land Registration Act. Neither can the register of deed certification be considered as competent evidence as it simply states that the OCTs of Opon Cadaster has been lost or destroyed during the last war without even stating the title numbers of the certificates of title. Respondents' failure to present any competent evidence indicating the number of the OCTs is a fatal defect. Okay. Okay. So we now go to the case of Paulino versus Court of Appeals. So in this case, Fernandez purchased in a public option a property. Okay. However, a fire broke out in Quezon City Hall, which uh, burned a portion, which included the Office of the Register of Deeds. So Paulino filed a petition for a constitution of the original copy of, uh, type of that title. Okay. Without awaiting the LRA report, the RTC rendered the decision granting the petition for a constitution. However, the RTC received the LRA report stating that the uh, copy, the original copy of the subject title is still on file with the RT. Okay, because, because it is among those saved titles from the fire. Okay. Further, when the technical description was plotted, it was identical to a lot in the name of Antonino. So whether the RTC lacked jurisdiction over the petition for reconstitution. When the owner's duplicate certificate of title has been lost, has not been lost, but is in fact in the possession of another person, then the reconstituted certificate is void because the court that rendered the decision had no jurisdiction. 
Reconstitution can be made only in case of loss of the original certificate. So it is the same as uh, the replacement of the owner's duplicate certificate. If the original title is still on file with the register of deeds, then the court has no basis for it to issue an order of reconstitution. It actually was in fact bereft of jurisdiction because the original title has not in fact been lost or destroyed. With the evidence that the original copy of the TCT was not lost and that the owner's duplicate copy was actually in the possession of another, the RTC decision was therefore null and void. Before jurisdiction over the case can be validly acquired, it is a condition that the certificate of title has not been issued to another person. If a certificate of title has not been lost, but is in fact in the possession of another person, the reconstituted title is void and the court rendering the decision has not acquired jurisdiction over the petition. If there was no loss or destruction, there is actually nothing to reconstitute. Okay. Puzon versus Santa Lucia. They are notices to owners of adjoining lots and actual occupants of the subject property, mandatory and jurisdictional, in petitions for judicial reconstitution of destroyed OCTs when the source for such reconstitution is the owner's duplicate transfer certificate of title. Because remember, uh, there are several sources for reconstitution. Okay, now the requirements that you must submit will depend on the source document that you are uh, submitting as basis for your reconstituted title. Okay, so petitioner filed a petition for reconstitution of two destroyed titles, which was based on the owner's duplicate copies of the TCTs. So the petition was granted. However, a petition for annulment of judgment was filed. Okay, Be because they contend that notices to owners of adjoining lots were not made. Okay, so the requirements under sections 12 and 13 do not apply to all petitions for judicial reconstitution, but only to those based on any of the sources specified in section 12. That is sources enumerated in sections 2 and 3 C to F, this act. In the present case, the source of the petition for reconstitution was petitioner's duplicate copies of title. Nothing in this provision requires that notices be sent to owners of adjoining lots. So when your basis or source document for reconstitution is the owner's duplicate certificate of title, there is no need to allege in the petition the names and addresses of the owners of adjoining lots. Okay? In some are 826 separates petitions for a constitution of loss or destroyed title into two main groups with two different requirements and procedures. Sources enumerated in sections 2 and 3, A to B, okay, uh, and those uh, in sections 2 and 3, C to F, okay, are placed together in another group. For group A, the requirements for judicial reconstitution are set forth in Section 10, while for Group B, the requirements are in Sections 12 and 13. So when the reconstitution is based on an extant owner's duplicate, the main concern is the authenticity and genuineness of the certificate, which could best be determined or contested by the government agency's concern. The adjoining owners or actual occupants of the property are hardly in a position to determine the genuineness of the certificate, giving them notice and inviting them to participate in the reconstitution proceeding is not only illogical, but constitutes a useless effort to plug the dockets of the court. Okay. ESO versus LIM. In this case, Standard Vacuum Oil filed a petition for the reconstitution of title of lot War. Okay, said title was lost and destroyed during the last world war. Now, Lee filed a petition for annulment of the reconstituted OCT 
and for declaration as the lawful and rightful owner of the property in question by a prescriptive acquisition. The requirements of Section 15 are a 26 that the destroyed or lost certificate of title which may be reconstituted is one that was in force at the time of the loss or destruction was not complied with. Uh, in reconstitution proceedings, ESO was able to show its valid title over the property in question. It was able to prove that it lost its owner's duplicate certificate when its building was burned in Manila while the original was lost in the custody of the RD of La Union, where it is also burned. Discrepancies between old and new surveys in the Philippines are often found and are due to the fact that the areas and distances in the old surveys were usually estimated instead of computed. Uh, the appellant wants the title of the appellee set aside, but he was absolutely no showing of a better title to himself. So if you are opposing the reconstitution of title, there is also a need to show your uh, standing, so to speak, uh, to oppose the said title. So in this case, there would have been no difference if he had been not. He could not have objected to the reconstitution by asserting his own rights over the property. Having no valid rights, he suffered no damage as a result of the reconstitution. Okay, so we now go to the case of Republic versus Lorenzo. So in this case, it is also another petition for reconstitution. The owner's duplicate copy was handed and delivered to the Spouses Pontanilla, which they have been keeping, only to find out that it was eaten by termites. Okay, so the original, on the other hand, was burned. So, since they failed to present substantial proof that the purported original certificate of title was valid and existing, and that they failed to present sufficient basis or source for the Constitution. So the issue is whether or not the reconstitution of the OCT was in accordance with pertinent law and jurisprudence. So what is the source document? The only document that is presented was uh, possible sources of reconstitution are those classified under the catch-all provision in paragraph F. Okay, so respondent's petition for reconstitution is merely based on a purported deed of sale, sketch plan, and technical description. So what do you mean by any other document? It refers to reliable documents of the kind described in the preceding enumerations that the documents referred to in Section 2F may be resorted to only in the absence of the preceding documents in the list. Therefore, the party praying for reconstitution must show that he had in fact sought to secure such documents and failed to find them. This court enumerated what should be shown before an order of reconstitution can validly issue. First, respondents failed to prove that the OCT was indeed eaten by termites. They did not execute an affidavit of loss. The certification issued by the RD did not categorically state that the original copy was among those destroyed in the fire. And a comparison between the certification and the technical description will reveal that there was a discrepancy in the land area. Respondents were not able to show adequate proof that a torrent's title was issued covering the subject land or that the same piece of land is what is covered by the lost or destroyed OC. Okay, the certification issued by the LRA is not among the salvage decrees on file in the LRA. Likewise, the deed of sale between Antonia Pasqua and Pedro Fontanilla cannot be relied upon as basis for reconstitution. An examination of the deed of sale would reveal that the number of the OCT is not uh, of the subject parcel of land is clearly indicated. However, the date when the OCT was issued does not appear in the document. So 
the absence of any document, private or official, mentioning the number of the certificate of title and the date when the same was issued does not warrant the granting of the petition. So the deed of sale together with the technical description, okay, and the plan is not a sufficient basis for a constitution. Okay, Cabello versus Republic. So in this case, Cabello sought the reconstitution of an of an OCT. Okay, however, the OCT on file with the RD and the owner's duplicate certificate were lost during the war. A certified photocopy of decree of registration issued by the LRC, a certification issued by the RD of Cebu City to the effect that its records do not show that a certificate of title ha has been issued over the lot and a tax declaration. So the certification issued by the RD puts in doubt whether an OCT was previously issued. So Section 2 of RA 26 uh, an authenticated copy of the decree of registration or patent for someone to which the OCT was issued is sufficient to support a petition for a constitution. The plan and technical description are therefore no longer required. They, that is the contention of the petitioner. The controversy lies in the documentary basis for a constitution. So petitioners attached to the petition a certified photocopy of the decree of registration pursuant to which an original certificate was allegedly issued by the RD covering the property. They also presented a witness who testified that he has actually seen the original title. We cannot give primacy to the findings of the trial court over the certification by the RD. Uh, the trial court should have been more circumspect in ordering reconstitution Considering that the only evidence is a finding that an OCT has been issued pursuant to the decree of registration. Okay, it was the testimony of two witnesses, one of whom it is the petition. The petition should have been filed under Section 2F, in which case it should have been accompanied by a duly approved plan and technical description. Republic versus Santua. The issue in this case is should the courts grant a petition for a constitution on the basis of a tax declaration, survey plan, and technical description? A petition for judicial reconstitution. Um, in this case, the original copy of the title was among those destroyed by fire uh, that uh, gutted the RD of Oriental Mindoro. The owner's duplicate copy was also lost. So the petition for a constitution is anchored on Section 3F of RA 26, with respondent preparing three documents, tax declaration, survey plan, and technical description. So the court has already settled in a number of cases that the principle of edus dem generis in statutory construction, any document, should be interpreted to refer to documents similar to those previously enumerated. Okay, the documents enumerated in Sections 3, A to E are documents that have been issued or are on file with the RD, thus highly credible. After all, the purpose of reconstitution is the restoration in the original form of lost or destroyed instrument attesting the title of a person. Tax declaration does not serve as a valid basis for a constitution. It can only be evidence of possession or claim of ownership, which is not an issue on the reconstitution. As for survey plan and technical description, uh, they are merely additional documents that should accompany the petition if uh, the source document for a constitution is uh, those under Section 3F. So it cannot also be the basis for reconstitution. We now go to the case of Republic versus Cataroja. So in this case, Cataroja filed a petition for reconstitution uh, concerning a lot uh, that was issued a decree, decree covering the subject lot. A copy of this decree, however, was no longer available in the records of the LRA. The LRA report verified as correct the plans and technical description. 
pursuant to the decree, the Register of Deeds of Cavite issued an OCT to their parents. But based on the certification, the original on file with it was lost. The Catarohas filed its claim, uh, claim that the owner's duplicate copy was also lost. Okay, now what evidence were the Catarohas able to present? Okay, um, they were not able to present uh, paragraphs A to E. Their parents lost the owner's duplicate copy. They did not have a certified true copy. Likewise, the RD did not have any document or encumbrance. So what did they present? They only presented the following. Microfilm filled printouts of the notice of hearing or of their parents' application in the official gazette. Certification from the LRA that they have been issued a decree. Certification from the RD stating that it cannot ascertain whether the land had been issued a certificate of title. So any other document, again, refers to documents of the kinds described in the preceding enumerations. So none of them proves that a certificate of title had in fact been issued in the name of their parents. The documents must come from official sources which recognize the ownership of the owner and his predecessors in interest. Nakataro has failed to show that they exerted efforts to look for and avail of the sources in paragraphs A to E before they availed themselves of paragraph F. So the microfilm print printouts are not proof that a certificate of title was in fact issued to the Kata to Kataroha's parents. The publication in the OG only proved that the couple took the initial step of publishing their claim to the property. There was no showing that the application had been granted and that a certificate of title was issued to them. Significantly, Act 496 recognized two kinds of de decrees. First, a decree issued under Section 37 that dismisses the application and a decree issued under Section 38 confirming title of ownership and its registration. Absent a clear and convincing proof that an OCT was in fact issued to their parents, the Kataroas cannot claim that their predecessors succeeded in acquiring title to the law. Okay. Republic versus La Gramada. So in this case, the original copy of the title was allegedly lost when fire raised the office of the Register of Deeds in, in Quezon City. So Pangilinan sold the lot to La Gramada. Respondents filed a petition for a constitution of title and for the issuance of second owners. The following documents were submitted as evidentiary basis, certified through copy of the technical description, uh, and, console, and the plan prepared and verified. Whether the documents presented are sufficient basis for a constitution. In this case, two certificates of title were lost, the original copy on file with the RD, and the duplicate owner's copy. Uh, the requirements of Sections 2 and 3 are almost identical. The enumerated requirements are documents from official sources which recognize the ownership of the owner and his predecessors in interest. Any other document in paragraph F are documents similar to those enumerated. When RA 26 speaks of any other document, it must refer to similar documents previously enumerated. We find that the documents are not sufficient basis for a constitution. A tax declaration is not sufficient to prove ownership. The certification of the alleged loss due to a fire uh, was a form document where the name of Pangilinan and the TCT number were placed on blanks. The one-page deed of sale where Pangilinan sold the 500 square meter lot did not even indicate the TCT number. Of the lot so the technical description and the blueprint plan are additional requirements under section 12 so uh, they are not sufficient cases for a constitution we now go to the last case republic versus versosa in this case versosa filed a petition for a constitution of oct 
The original copy was burned when Quezon City Hall was gutted by fire while the owner's duplicate was lost. Okay, what they presented is a photocopy of the of the T of the TCT. Okay. Uh, under the owner's duplicate of the TCT is given primacy because such document is an exact reproduction of the original. It is required, however, that the OCT and not a mere photocopy be presented to the court or at least an electronic or certified proof copy. This is to preclude any question as to the genuineness and authenticity of the said document. In this case, only a photocopy of the owner's duplicate was presented. So the petition may be treated as one filed under Section 3F. The photocopy of the owner's certificate of title presented by the respondent is still considered as secondary evidence. However, the uh, petitioners were able to submit several documents to prove the existence, execution, and contents of the certificate of title. Among these are the photocopy, of the title, the certification from the RD of Quezon City that the original was among those burned, the technical description and survey plan of the property, the tax declaration and tax receipts, and that's a report submitted by the LRA confirming the previous existence of the title. So the foregoing documents on record constitute sufficient basis for reconstitution. When a court, after hearing a petition for a constitution, finds that the evidence presented is sufficient and proper to grant the same, the petitioner uh, and the certificate sought to be reconstituted was enforced, it becomes a duty of the court to issue the order of reconstitution. So in this case, even if what the petitioner presented is only a photocopy of the title, because there are other documentary evidence supporting the reconstitution, the court granted the petition. So that's it for land laws. Thank you for listening.